Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one The Children Without Wings, written by Skull Bomb Raging. We are those who decide the planet should be spheres and that they should be held together by the force of gravity. There was once five of us you, all, Ki, Ra, and I. Each of us decided that we would make a single world of creatures and see how they developed. I, the meticulous crafter that I am, went to work making my new world. There was a great many creatures I created, all ready to flourish when the universe was finally set in motion. Ra, however, was not meticulous at his designs. He would have trouble with shaping creatures well enough for them to thrive, and he must have held an amount of resentment toward me for it. I had stopped for a short time in order to fix an irregularity that had formed elsewhere in the universe. What I came back to was a disaster. All of my creatures had been plucked, stripped of their abilities to glide on the astral winds. Each creature that is shaped by one of us is formed around a spirit which allows them to interact with a fraction of the power that we had used to shape them. Once that spirit is removed, it cannot be replaced. It would be like attempting to fill a broken vessel with water. No matter how much you pour, it'll only leak out again. Without their spirits, they were all doomed to die of anything and everything, even such mundane things as fire and emptiness. I looked tearfully on at my creatures that would never know the thing that they had lost, the emptiness that had been wrought upon them forever. I searched the area for the power that was used to do this and found that of Ra. I didn't hesitate to make this known to the other four, and together we banished him from our universe. The other four offered to allow me to create another world in apology, which I hesitantly accepted. But it didn't matter anymore. All of my motivation to create was gone. I made a number of half-hearted creations, as it was all I could muster. The universe was set into motion but my excitement wasn't there anymore. Some time passed, my new world had settled into a clunky and poorly devised equilibrium. I watched as they did their dance, completely unable to continue to thrive. I became quite sick of observing the lack of progress, so I decided to see the other corners of the universe. The other three had made wonderful works of art, as they always tended to, each having at least one creature that could leave their planet and explore the cosmos we had laid out for them. Yous had four that ventured to the stars. One and I have. A mess of untapped potential. I wondered for a while, seeing what sorts of things our creations were doing. I happened to be near my first world in this universe, so, despite my better judgment, I decided to see what had become of it. What I saw confused me. The world had formed completely without the harmony of the other worlds. Even beyond that, the creatures ate each other to temporarily fill that space where their spirit was torn from them. Those creatures fought and died to protect their continued right to exist. One creature in particular caught my eye using sticks with rocks tied on them to fell beasts multiple times their size. They seemed to call themselves humans. I left for a time, but found myself wanting to know what had happened to the humans, so I returned, and I continued to return. Despite the fact that it could kill them, they harnessed fire, finding ways to keep it from harming them. They made clothes, protecting themselves from the environment which their bodies were no longer designed to resist. Slowly, even though it was the way of this world, the humans began fighting less and less, forming societies that grew larger and larger. The fact that they could not rise from the ground meant that they instead explored downward, 
allowing them to find better materials to make better tools, and from them, even better tools and materials. I thought it was quaint how they lived, though. I thought it would never match up to their faraway cousins that already traveled the stars. One day, though, they accomplished something that changed my view of them forever. The humans created a strange device, and for 12 seconds, they rejected the restrictions placed upon them at birth and flew. Unlike the birds whose ancestors had to alter nearly everything about themselves in order to stay aloft, the humans simply refused the notion that their place was to be bound by gravity. I was speechless, even if it wasn't a lot right at that moment. They had accomplished something I never dared to believe was possible for them. I wondered how many more things they could do that I didn't believe was possible. Perhaps they would one day meet the creations of you, Ol, and Key. These children without wings. End of story. Story number two. The Smell of Fear, written by The Missing Think. Inspector, thank the deity you're here. The Galax General was practically yellow with desperation, or perhaps anxiety. Inspector Gar took his time settling into the offered chair. Partly, it was to give General Flattis a moment to compose himself, and partly because he was by nature very methodical. So, General, why don't you start by telling me why you called me in? It's a nightmare every time we try to get information from only these, uh, Terrans, the interrogated eyes. They're taken to the chamber, naked and secured to the chair. The interrogator walks in and five minutes later they die. The Terran doesn't even move. I assume you have a recording of one of these incidents. The inspector asked. Of course. He gestured to the wall screen and hit a control on his desk. The video played out as exactly as described. The interrogator walked in, the door was closed, and he started talking with the prisoner. The conversation lasted for about three minutes. Then the interrogator clutched his throat and died. The terror never moved from his chair until the guards came back ten minutes later. Inspector Gar sat in silence, mulling over the evidence. General Flattis started to speak, but was quickly silenced by the inspector holding a single finger in the air. I want to speak to the Terran, but first take me to that chamber. Arriving at the interrogation room, the inspector spoke again. I will enter alone, if you please, and close the door behind me. The room was bare. Solid stone floor, plain white walls with no windows and nothing on the ceiling apart from the night, air conditioning grill and video camera. The seat in the middle of the room was made of plain steel and bolted to the floor, arm and leg shackles welded securely in place. Again, Inspector Gar stood in silence for several minutes, his eyes occasionally darting to one of the few fixtures of the room. Eventually, satisfied, he rapped lightly on the door. Speaking to the guard, escorting him, he asked, Where is the Terran now? At this time, he should be in the yard getting his daily exercise, sir. Excellent. Take me to him at once. The exercise yard was a square, twenty meters a side, flanked by high stone walls. Wires between the walls prevented any rescue by air. The ground was bare concrete, broken up by occasional bushes planted in large pots and scattered benches on one of which the Terran was seated. Greetings, human. I am Inspector Gar. May I know your name? Good afternoon, Inspector. Private Second Class Johnson, pleased to meet you. The Inspector took the proffered hand and gripped it briefly before letting go. How are you being treated here? Everything satisfactory? Yes, sir. Uh, my cell is about as big as my entire barracks, and the bed is about as comfortable as any I've slept in. And the food? How is that? Better than we got in the army, if I'm honest, sir. Meat, fruit, vegetables, all the vitamins and fiber my mother could have wished for. Very good. 
It seems that you're being adequately cared for. So I will leave you to your exercise. Good day, Private Johnson. Back in the general's office, Inspector Gar was explaining to Flattis the simple changes to the procedure he should make. All the future interrogations should take place in the exercise yard, or worst case inside the prisoner's cell. Also, as a suggestion, don't call it an interrogation. Maybe just a conversation or a, a welfare check. You'll get far more information that way. I'll also send you an updated menu for the prisoners' meals. But how will that help? The general asked, puzzled. Are you familiar with the poison gas hydrogen sulfide and how it is created? The inspector asked instead. It's something to do with organic waste and some uh, specialized bacteria, I believe. But how would the Terran gain access to something like that without us noticing? There is a phrase in Terran literature that you should research. Silent, but deadly. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to quickly thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Barky, Trigan95, Beauty Cure, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholt, Jordan Buxborn, Angry Marine, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Arcadian.